Hello, Hi Rock. Welcome to our daily devotional. We are continuing with our exploration of the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And today we are continuing with our look at generosity, or as it's in some translations, goodness. And today we're looking at Jesus's teaching about this in Luke chapter 6, verses 37 through 38, where we read the following. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others, or it will all come back against you. Forgive others, and you will be forgiven. Give, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shaken together, to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, if you were coming across this passage for the first time, this would seem kind of mechanical, like it's just like a karma thing, like the amount you give is the amount you get back. And I have a question about that for, for you in just a minute. But uh, looking at this uh, picture of generosity, this you know idea, it seems to be like the image of like a bag of grain being filled. And then uh, once you fill it, you got to shake it around to make room for more and it pressed down and it's spilling over onto you. Um, this makes me think of like, uh, have you ever been to one of those uh, places that you buy a, a bowl or a cup, a certain size, and then you go fill the soft serve ice cream or soft serve yogurt on your own. Um, and everybody like tries to stack like an entire mountain of ice cream in there. And of course, that's probably why uh, people don't do that anymore. They they make you weigh it. So, so you can't cheat the system like that. Uh, some college cafeterias might have that uh, still where you can just get a certain bowl and, and fill it uh, to your heart's content. And this really points to, I think, a generosity we have towards ourselves. We want to give ourselves as much as we can. But imagine if we were this kind of generous with with other people, you know, and that's the image I think that's here is that there's this kind of generosity that will be uh, given to you, pressed down, shaken together, make room for more and poured into your lap. How do you put this into practice? And uh, the image that comes to mind for me is uh, Thomas Merton. He was a uh, Catholic monk of the Cistercian order, and he shared in one of his books about how uh, what they did in their monastery is you weren't allowed to serve yourself. So when it came time for dinner, you couldn't serve yourself and you couldn't ask anybody else to serve you and you couldn't ask for seconds. So the only thing, the only option available to you was to serve others. So that was, and if, if, you, if no one served you, then you just weren't served. But the idea behind it was the more you became focused on serving others, it ended up being where everyone was truly taken care of. Uh, we tried this at a retreat one time where... We, um, we made it so that no one you know, we practiced the same thing. And some people tried to game the system, like these two brothers decided they were going to go through and just ask each other everything along the way, which is kind of cute and hilarious and all that. And some of the moms commented that this is how they live, <laughs> live on a daily basis anyway. Um, but I do think it is a practice where it's it gets us out of ourselves to look at the needs of others rather than trying to just be uh, generous to ourselves. And of course, in this passage, I think the question comes up, who is who is it that is going to be generous to us in return? Uh, it doesn't specify. It could be other people. When we're generous to them, they will want to be generous uh, to us. Uh, pro probably Jesus here has in mind God will be generous generous to us. God will bless us richly as we choose to uh, bless others. Now, of course, the opposite is true here as well. It says that judgment and condemnation are uh, not linked so much to righteousness, but judgment and condemnation of others is really linked to kind of a stinginess, right? Like it's the the opposite of, of generosity. We just don't want to be generous to other people. And that's why we condemn. Generosity, I think in this context would be, you know, to seek the good of the other person, you know, like you do for yourself, like piling that ice cream high as you can into that bowl. And of course, that's God's generosity uh, to us. But I still think it links to this question of why is God's generosity seemingly dependent on our generosity. I mean, Jesus is very clear that uh, we, you know, this is by faith, not by works. It's not something that we can ever deserve. And so why is Jesus here teaching that God will be generous to us when we are generous to others rather than simply being generous to us, period? And uh, Dave, I'm, I have some ideas about that, but I'm wondering what you think about that and, and, and about that question of why Jesus links God's generosity uh, to ours, that we in some sense have to be generous first. You know, I'm thinking about that story where the um, Jesus, it's a parable that Jesus tells about a servant who owes a king amount of money. 
I'm uh, sorry, uh, a, an, an uh, extravagant amount of money, right? More money, actually, I mean, it was a joke. Because, you know, there was a servant who owed a, a certain king a bajillion quadrillion dollars, right? Like, it's like more than anything exists. Uh, and, uh, and, and, but then the king ends up forgiving him the debt, right? He says, okay, I raised the debt. To the, but now the guy goes out and sees somebody who owes him some money, you know, a paltry sum. And, uh, and then as the guy tossed in jail and beaten and all this kind of stuff, and the king then calls back the person he forgave. Said, "Whoa, what happened here? I forgave you this massive, you know, biggest debt ever in history, and this other guy owed you nothing. And and here you, you know, held him to to this, you know, strict accounting. And uh, and and I think that's why. I, to me, that's what this is about. Is it's one thing if you're saying, hey, we go first, and then God just sort of takes our cues." Um, but I think what happens is God goes first and, and now is basically, so he gives us everything. And, and by that, I'm talking about the material blessings, right? Food and just the globe, the world that he made for us, right? This amazing place. God gave us all of these things. God gives abilities. God gave us personalities. God gives all these things, but also it applies to God's mercy, God's generosity, God's kindness, right? All of those things that God gives to us. So God is generous. But then the question is, what do we do with God's generosity? Are we generous with the things that God gave us? And right, and this doesn't just apply to money, though it certainly applies to money. It applies to time and it applies to all of the gifts that I have where God was generous with me. Am I generous with that gift with others? So that's the first kind of generosity. But like I said, with God, God exercises two kinds of generosity, right? There's that the, the giving of gifts there's also the giving of mercy right? and, and the extending of grace. And so then God has been, he already was generous. So now the question is, how generous am I going to be with, with the thing that God was already generous with me about, right? And, and, by, uh, and I, I think then what we do see very clearly here is much like the parable that Jesus told. I mean, I feel like all of this hangs together pretty well. But he also talks about several of these same themes throughout his Sermon on the Mount over in Matthew. Um, and there he says with same thing that, um, and he says it in the context of judging people. He says that with the cup that you use, i.e. the cup, the measuring cup that you use to measure out how much mercy, how much grace am I going to give to other people? He says, that's the cup that will be used for you. You get to decide how big it is. Now, God has already poured all kinds of mercy, but in terms of God's continued mercy, he'll, he'll just use whatever cup you want to use. And so if you want to be exceedingly merciful to others, God is delighted to be exceedingly merciful to you. But if, if you have decided to be stingy to others, you will not forgive. You are not going to extend grace. You say, oh, I'll give you two chances and that's it. That's, you know, I, I've already been giving you more than enough grace. Well, great. God will give you two chances. Uh, are you sure that's how you want to play that game with God? And so that's where Jesus is telling us, be extravagant with other people in, this, in the giving of mercy. Uh, and then, you know, back in, in, that was in Matthew 7. In Matthew 6, Jesus talks about, uh, you know, the, God forgives us as we forgive others. And then you kind of think, well, Max, surely it doesn't mean that. In fact, and Jesus comes back after the, the Lord's Prayer and clarifies, if we don't forgive others, our Father in heaven will not forgive us. It really is true. But I think it's very, it's essential to say, because this is what keeps it being different slightly than, than the, the, the karmic idea. In the karmic idea that we are the progenitors of generosity and grace. But in the biblical idea, we are only ever responders. God always is the initiator. God is the initiator in us coming to faith. God is the initiator in all of our, our relationship with God. We you talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, God is always the initiator. And then the question that God has is, how will you respond to this incredible gift that I've given you? And whether it's the material wealth, whether it's the personal gifts you have, whether it's the time that you have, the energy that you have, or mercy, grace, and forgiveness, God says, hey, you decide. And, and that's where I think that God, God's inviting us to share his spirit. He's inviting us to imitate him. And he's warning us that afterwards, he'll it to imitate us. And I think that right there puts me in perspective. When I'm being cruel, when I, or not even cruel, if I'm being just legalistic, 
right? If I'm holding somebody to account and I'm doing what's right and I can justify it. And if I do that with other people, I, it's worth pausing to hear Jesus' words and think, is this how I want God to deal with me? Of course, the answer is no. This is not at all I want the attitude I want with God. And it's funny that I hear so many people complaining about sort of the 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 idea, right, that they've heard somewhere about this judgmental, angry God, right? Oh, wait, why? Who's God to judge me? Why does anybody judge me? And yet they themselves are so judgmental of others. And I said, well, God was actually the generous one. You're the judgmental one. But in fact, if that God says, if that's how you like to roll, okay, I'll roll that way with you. And so we get to decide not how generous God is. God is exceedingly, endlessly, eternally generous. What we get to decide is how generous God will be with us. Yeah, I, I, hundred percent agree. I think that's the, that's the, you know, as much as there ever is a right answer, I think that's the right answer. Uh, another part of me thinks too about uh, raising kids and how like one of the worst outcomes possible is if I raise my kids to be spoiled brats um, so that they're not even able to appreciate the things that they have. And if I give them things and, and, and don't encourage an attitude of gratitude, if they don't learn how to be grateful for what they have, then, then of course they're going to be miserable. And I think uh, some of that is at play here as well. It's like, if we don't learn to be generous, like gratitude leads to generosity. And if we don't learn to be gra uh, gracious and, and, and generous with what we have, if we just think it's what we deserve, if it's something that's owed to us, it's, that's just a really kind of miserable place uh, to live. Uh, it, it's, it's not what I want for any of my kids. And I think that's not what God wants for any of us. And so God, I think links, perhaps links generosity, his generosity uh, back to us um, in this way, so that he encourages us to be generous, like he is generous, to be free from this trap of sinful self-centeredness that we're so easily fall into. Well, and I mean, I think just to close, I, I want us to hear again that very, very last phrase that Jesus says in the passage that we read today. And I want you to think about this, you know, as you, all of us who are listening, think about this in the the in light of how you tithe, how you give to others beyond your tithe, about how you forgive, about who you hold grudges with, uh, about how quick you are to serve when somebody's in need and be inconvenienced. Now, with all those things in mind, hear what Jesus has to say. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. I think those are, those are words that should be sobering for all of us because I think all of us have places where some places where maybe we may be exceedingly generous, but some places we can be a little stingy or some people with whom we can be a little stingy. And I think that's, well, friends, hear the word of the Lord. I guess that's what I'm saying. Well, that is a uh, sobering thought to end with, and but I think it's an important one. And uh, Dave, I think we're going to need, this is, again, this is a, generosity is a fruit of the spirit. It's not something we do on our own efforts. So would you pray for us that we would be obedient to the spirit and empowered by the spirit in this? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful for your just undeserved and inexplicable, inexplicable generosity to us. The fact that you have chosen to give everything for people who deserve nothing. Lord, you, the, we hear in your word that you sent your son to die for us. Die for us. While we were still sinners, God, you are generous and your generous knows no bounds so god i pray that we would have your holy spirit in us that we too could be generous with others that we too could be fearless so that we could be set free to be more generous god i pray that your spirit would be alive in us and flow through us and bless others touch others through us that they would experience your grace and your kindness and your abundance through us. God, we love you. We ask for you to do this work in us. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. May God give you an opportunity to show generosity today. Go in peace.